Custom Views. In this presentation, we will explore how to create a custom view and some of the choices we have along the way. The first thing we need to do, of course, is pick a sample. I'll be using my task list and then, of course, to create the new view. Now, to create the new view, we have two choices. We can either use the List tab and then Create a View, or we have an option to choose Create a View from below. Either way is equally fine. When I choose Create a View, I will get the choice of what type of view. Will it be a standard, which includes all the features, by the way, a data sheet, which is an editable spreadsheet view, a calendar view, we have to have at least a few date fields in order to make that one function, a Gantt chart view, access, or a custom view in designer. Now I'll be choosing a standard view. When our view options present themselves, we need to consider this a report of sorts, so to speak, whereas we get to choose what shows up and how it shows up, how it's displayed on the screen. Now we need to give it a name. I'm going to call mine in progress. It will not be the default view. However, I could make it the default view. This will be a public view because I would like anyone who has access to edit and or read or own this particular list to be able to see this view. So this view will be shared. I get to determine exactly which columns we are presenting. We would like to, of course, show the task name. We would like to see who it's assigned to. And then I would like to show the due date. And you can arrange the order of them as well. So first the task name, then assigned to, then the due date. And then we also would like to know the task status. And if we take a look down here, we see we have several to choose from. So here's our task status. And we'll go ahead and include that up there as well. And ultimately, the due date and the start date. So all of these are available for us to see and add. And once we've added all the fields that we're interested in, and they have roughly the, the precise order that we're interested in, we'll go ahead then and oh, we wanted the start date as well. And let's take a look then at how we sort them. They may be sorted, uh, for example, in a very specific order. Or, I'm going to go ahead and collapse the sort, they may be filtered. And we may choose then, of course, to filter out just certain things. So I can say, show items only when the following is true. And this could be that a specific field is equal to, less than, greater to something else. So when the task status is equal to in progress, we can go ahead and make sure at that point that's all we see. We also have an opportunity to change the view. Will we allow for multiple checkboxes? That's nice. A group by, so I can have my tasks grouped by what? Grouped by maybe priority for organizational purposes. We may have totals, so if there is a something with numerical data, we can go ahead and do math on that. If it is going to be a number or a date of some sort, we can not only just count, but we can do an average, the max, the minimum. We also have a style, which will allow me to take a look and decide that maybe it shall be a basic table, it shall be shaded, you know, whatever the style is that we're interested in. How do we handle folders if they show up at all? An item limit, how many items per page will we display? And we can determine that. We can also limit the total number of items being returned. Do be careful of that one. As a consultant, I've seen many times when people say, oh, our, our files are missing or something's incomplete. Oftentimes, it's just a view that has a limited number of items that are being pulled in. So sometimes that's the culprit. So that's something to keep an eye on. Will this be a mobile view? I can decide possibly to use it for a mobile view or not. Ultimately, I will click OK. And of course, any changes or settings or options that you would like to try out, please do so. But I'll go ahead and click OK to commit to this. 
And once that view is saved, then it becomes the current view. And I see now that I have all of my normal tasks that are showing in progress. Some other tasks I do have are available, but they do not have in progress. And if I edit one of these, while I'm editing, I have an opportunity to show more options, of course. And the more options that I would like to show is, for example, I would like to bump the priority of one of these up to a high priority level. And then I will say, now I see that, of course, they both still appear because they're both in progress, but because of my group by, one is showing under high priority, the other is showing under a um, normal priority. So extremely helpful, whichever technique you opt to use. You may have as many views as you need, and you may modify any current views. You may create new views. And if you're curious about what views are present and what their properties are, remember we can always go to List and List Settings, scroll down, and then we see a full listing of all views, even the one that I had just created called In Progress. And again, any changes we want to make to them, it's very easy to do so. And I do advise that you first look to see what views are available before you begin to create one. Odds are there may be one that was created out of the box with that particular list type, or if you're working in a team environment, one of your coworkers might have already started a view that has the, the basis for what you need. Therefore, no reason to reinvent the wheel, possibly take an existing view and use it, or again, look for any other custom views that your coworkers might have built. Up next, exercise working with views.